a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Roanoke Colony The Roanoke Colony, also known as the Lost Colony, was established in 1585 on Roanoke Island in what is today's Dare County, North Carolina. It was a late 16th century attempt by Queen Elizabeth I to establish a permanent English settlement in North America. The colony was founded by Sir Walter Raleigh. The colonists disappeared during the Anglo-Spanish War, three years after the last shipment of supplies from England. Their disappearance gave rise to the nickname, the Lost Colony. There is no conclusive evidence as to what happened to the colonists. Background The enterprise was originally financed and organized by Sir Humphrey Gilbert, who drowned in 1583 returning from a voyage to the fishing settlement at St. John's, Newfoundland. Sir Humphrey Gilbert's half-brother Sir Walter Raleigh later gained his brother's charter from the Queen, and subsequently executed the details of the charter through his delegates Ralph Lane and Richard Granville. Raleigh's distant cousin. Raleigh's Charter On March 25, 1584, Queen Elizabeth I granted Raleigh a charter for the colonization of the area of North America. This charter specified that Raleigh needed to establish a colony in North America, or lose his right to colonization. The Queen and Raleigh intended that the venture should provide riches from the New World. The Queen's charter said that Raleigh was supposed to discover, search, find out, and view such remote heathen and barbarous lands, countries, and territories. To have, hold, occupy, and enjoy. The Queen's Charter also said that Raleigh was supposed to establish a base from which, to send privateers on raids against the treasure fleets of Spain. The purpose of these raids was to tell Spain that England was ready for war. The original charter basically told Raleigh to establish a military base to counteract the activities of the Spaniards. Raleigh himself never visited North America, although he led expeditions in 1595 and 1617 to South America's Orinoco River Basin in search of the legendary golden city of El Dorado. First Voyages to Roanoke Island on April 27, 1584, Raleigh dispatched an expedition led by Philip Armadas and Arthur Barlow to explore the eastern coast of North America. They arrived on Roanoke Island on July 4 and soon established relations with the local natives, the Secretans and Croatans. Barlow returned to England with two Croatans named Manrio and Wanches, who were able to describe the politics and geography of the area to Raleigh. Based on the information given, Raleigh organized a second expedition, to be led by Sir Richard Grenville. Grenville's fleet departed Plymouth on April 9, 1585, with five main ships, Tiger, Roebuck, Red Lion, Elizabeth, and Dorothy. A severe storm off the coast of Portugal separated Tiger from the rest of the fleet. The captains had a contingency plan if they were separated, which was to meet up again in Puerto Rico, and Tiger arrived in the Bay of Mosquito on May 11. While waiting for the other ships, Grenville established relations with the resident Spanish while simultaneously engaging in some privateering against them. He also built a fort. Elizabeth arrived soon after the fort's construction. Grenville eventually tired of waiting for the remaining ships and departed on June 7. The fort was abandoned and its location remains unknown. Tiger sailed through Ocracoke Inlet on June 26, but it struck a shoal, ruining most of the food supplies. The expedition succeeded in repairing the ship and, in early July, reunited with Roebuck and Dorothy, which had arrived in the Outer Banks with Red Lion some weeks previous. Red Lion had dropped off its passengers and left for Newfoundland for privateering. In the New World, during the initial exploration of the mainland coast and the native settlements, the Europeans blamed the natives of the village of Aquascogoc for stealing a silver cup. As retaliation, the settlers sacked and burned the village. English writer and courtier Richard Heckley's contemporaneous reports also describe this incident. Despite this incident and a lack of food, Grenville decided to leave Ralph Lane and 107 men to establish a colony at the north end of Roanoke Island promising to return in April 1586 with more men and fresh supplies. The group disembarked on August 17, 1585, and built a small fort on the island. 
There are no surviving renderings of the Roanoke Fort, but it was likely similar in structure to the one in Guayanilla Bay. Grenville in the Tiger on only his seventh day of sail captured a rich Spanish galleon, Santa Maria de San Vicente off Bermuda which he took with him as a prize back to England. As April 1586 passed, there was no sign of Grenville's relief fleet. Meanwhile, in June, bad blood resulted from the destruction of the village, and this spurred an attack on the fort by the local Native Americans, which the colonists were able to repel. Soon after the attack, Sir Francis Drake was on his way home from a successful raid in the Caribbean, and he stopped at the colony and offered to take the colonists back to England. Several accepted, including metallurgist Joachim Garns. On this return voyage, the Roanoke colonists introduced tobacco, maize, and potatoes to England. The relief fleet arrived shortly after Drake's departure with the colonists. Finding the colony abandoned, Grenville returned to England with the bulk of his force, leaving behind a small detachment of 15 men both to maintain an English presence and to protect Tralee's claim to Roanoke Island. Lost Colony In 1587, Raleigh dispatched a new group of 115 colonists to establish a colony on Chesapeake Bay. They were led by John White, an artist and friend of Raleigh who had accompanied the previous expedition to Roanoke, and was appointed governor of the 1587 colony. White and Raleigh named 12 assistants to aid in the settlement. They were ordered to stop at Roanoke to pick up the small contingent left there by Grenville the previous year, but when they arrived on July 22, 1587, they found nothing except a skeleton that may have been the remains of one of the English garrison. When they could find no one, the master pilot Simon Fernandez refused to let the colonists return to the ships, insisting that they establish the new colony on Roanoke. His motives remain unclear, however, and new evidence offered by author Brandon Fulham indicates not only that Fernandez had good reason for his actions, but that the decision to alter the Chesapeake Bay destination had already been agreed to prior to their arrival at Roanoke. White re-established relations with the Croton and other local tribes, but those with whom Lane had fought previously refused to meet with him. Shortly thereafter, colonist George Howe was killed by a native while searching alone for crabs in Albemarle Sound. The colonists persuaded Governor White to return to England to explain the colony's desperate situation and ask for help. Left behind were about 115 colonists the remaining men and women who had made the Atlantic crossing plus White's newly born granddaughter Virginia Dare, the first English child born in the Americas. White sailed for England in late 1587, although crossing the Atlantic at that time of year was a considerable risk. Plans for a relief fleet were delayed first by the captain's refusal to return during the winter and then the attack on England of the Spanish Armada, and the subsequent Anglo-Spanish War. Every able English ship joined the fight, leaving White without a means to return to Roanoke at the time. In the spring of 1588, White managed to acquire two small vessels and sailed for Roanoke. However, his attempt to return was thwarted, when the captains of the ships attempted to capture several Spanish ships on the outward bounder voyage. They themselves were captured and their cargo seized. With nothing left to deliver to the colonists, the ships returned to England. Return to the Lost Colony Because of the continuing war with Spain, White was unable to mount another resupply attempt for an additional three years. He finally gained passage on a privateering expedition organized by John Watts and Walter Raleigh. They agreed to stop off at Roanoke on the way back after raiding the Spanish in the Caribbean. White landed on August 18, 1590, on his granddaughter's third birthday, but found the settlement deserted. His men could not find any trace of the 90 men, 17 women, and 11 children, nor was there any sign of a struggle or battle. The only clue was the word, Croatoan, carved into a post of the fence around the village, and the letter CRO carved into a nearby tree. All the houses and fortifications had been dismantled which meant that their departure had not been hurried. Before he had left the colony, White instructed the colonists that, if anything happened to them, they should carve a Maltese cross on a tree nearby, indicating that their absence had been forced. There was no cross, and White took this to mean that they had moved to Croatoan Island, but he was unable to conduct a search. A massive storm was forming and his men refused to go any farther. 
The next day, they left. Thomas Harriot Born in 1560, Thomas Harriot entered Raleigh's employment in the early 1580s, after graduating from the University of Oxford. Harriot may have been among the men of Arthur Barlow's 1584 expedition of the colony. He trained the members of Raleigh's first Roanoke expedition in navigational skills and eventually sailed to Roanoke with the second group of settlers, where his skills as a naturalist became particularly important along with those of painter and settlement leader John White. Between their arrival in Roanoke in April 1585 and the July 1586 departure, Harriet and White both conducted detailed studies of the Roanoke area, with Harriet compiling his samples and notes into several notebooks that did not survive the colony's disappearance. Harriet also wrote descriptions of the surrounding flora and fauna of the area, which survive in his work A Brief and True Report of the New Found Land of Virginia, written as a report on the colony's progress to the English government on the request of Raleigh. Viewed by modern historians as propaganda for the colony, this work has become vastly important to Roanoke's history due to Harriet's observations on wildlife as well as his depictions of Indian activities at the time of the colony's disappearance. Harriet reports that relations between the Roanoke Indians and the English settlers were mutually calm and prosperous, contradicting other historical evidence that catalogues the bloody struggles between the Roanoke Indians and both of Raleigh's commanders. Sir Richard Grenville and his successor, Ralph Lane. Harriot recounts little to none of these accounts in his report to England, and does not mention the disorderly state of the colony under either Grenville's or Lane's tenure, correctly assuming these facts would prevent Roanoke from gaining more settlers. Harriot's text did not reach England, or the English press, until 1588, by which time the fate of the lost colony was sealed in all but name investigations into Roanoke. Twelve years went by before Orley decided to find out what happened to his colony. Led by Samuel Mace, this 1602 expedition differed from previous voyages in that Raleigh bought his own ship and guaranteed the sailors' wages so that they would not be distracted by privateering. However, Raleigh still hoped to make money from the trip and Mace's ship landed in the outer banks to gather aromatic woods, or plants such as sassafras that would generate a decent profit back in England. By the time they could turn their attention to the colonists, the weather had turned bad and they were forced to return without even making it to Roanoke Island. By this time, having been arrested for treason, Raleigh was unable to send any further missions. There was one final expedition in 1603 led by Bartholomew Gilbert, with the intention of finding Roanoke colonists. Their intended destination was Chesapeake Bay, but bad weather forced them to land in an unspecified location near there. The landing team, including Gilbert himself, was killed by a group of Native Americans, for unknown reasons on July 29. The remaining crew were forced to return to England empty-handed. Meanwhile, the Spanish had different reasons for wanting to find the colony. Knowing of Raleigh's plans to use Roanoke as a base for privateering, they were hoping to destroy it. Moreover, they had been getting mostly inaccurate reports of activities there, and they imagined the colony to be far more successful than it actually was. In 1590, they found the remnants of the colony purely by accident, but assumed it was only an outlying base of the main settlement which they believed was in the Chesapeake Bay area. But just as the Anglo-Spanish War prevented White from returning in a timely manner, Spanish authorities in the New World could not muster enough support back home for such a venture. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?